Welcome to Mr. Brown's Basement, a channel devoted to sharing the craft of repairing, restoring, and modifying vintage electronic gear, and other random stuff. Here we have a Nintendo NES, and it has an unusual problem. When it's plugged into a television by the RF connector, that is this round connector, the video works, but the sound doesn't. So let me demonstrate. If I use the audio and video connectors, it works fine. This is the schematic of the power supply and the RF and video and audio from the NES. I'll put a link to it in the description. The audio comes from here, goes through this transistor, and if it was going to the line level out, would be going through this capacitor, this choke, and straight out. We know the signal's getting to there, but we're not using this. We want to use this one right over here. So the signal has to go through this transistor, through this choke, and then down through here. Now we know the video is good because we do get a picture we can be fairly certain that this stuff is okay. That leaves this transistor as being suspect or possibly one of the other components in the way or perhaps a bad solder joint. Hard to say. Now these, uh, these capacitors here, they're not even marked, are going to be very low value and highly unlikely that they're going to be bad. These resistors could be, but unlikely. I'm betting 2SC1740. Now that transistor isn't made anymore, but there are common substitutes. As it turns out, 2SC1740 is a general purpose signal or switching transistor. I'm going to use something which is common and inexpensive, and maybe a little bit better, the 2N2222A in uh, epoxy package. The transistor I suspect is this one labeled 5. But before I replace 5, I'm just going to make sure that these resistors are within tolerance, and this resistor is within tolerance, because those are critical to the signal path. Now, if this transformer is bad, then I have a problem, but I don't, I've, it's just a small signal. Transformer is highly unlikely to go open, could corrode, but that's about the only thing that could happen to it, or maybe somebody's detuned it or something, but highly unlikely. I'm betting on this transistor number five. The PlayStation is held together with a bunch of screws. And here, they're a Phillips head. I'm going to pull them out. After six screws, the top comes off. That leaves the metal shield. You can see a repair label for me because I repaired something else inside. So this comes off with a bunch of screws. This whole thing lifts off and that will reveal the printed circuit board. So the shield is off. Just a bunch of screws. I see a few there. They go into the plastic underneath. The RF modulator and power supply have been removed. There it is. Now I have to take off the top and take a look inside. Here is the inside of the RF modulator and power supply. It has some electrolytics. I'm 
I may replace those, haven't decided yet, only because it's such an awful pain to get in here that I never want to do this again, ever. Here's Q5, the one I'm after, right underneath the frame, right there. Nice and inaccessible. I've removed the main filter capacitor. Now I can see Q5 quite clearly. And as you see on the left-hand side of the transistor, it's green. That means corrosion, which has probably made its way into the transistor. I never would have seen that if I hadn't removed the main filter capacitor, the one where I wrote the plus. While I've been in here, I've also replaced two other capacitors, these two red ones. They're coupling capacitors for audio and video. So let's uh, replace that transistor Q5. That transistor has been removed and put into this transistor tester. And let's see what we get. Gain of 7 at 5.4 milliamps. Doesn't look like it's a good transistor. The main filter capacitor had to be removed, so I thought if it's already out, I might as well replace it. The other two are coupling capacitors for audio and video. I haven't reassembled everything yet, so there will probably be noise in the signal, but we'll soon find out. It's connected up with RF again. Yeah, there's some noise in the signal. Let's see if I can, with my other hand, get it started. Aha, we have sound. Let's restart it. Okay, okay let's start. This NES is repaired and is now playable whether it's connected by audio and video cables or by the RF cable. I can now catch up on my Mario 3. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to Mr. Brown's Basement for more interesting and unusual videos.